the other left, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> Good. Good. Bye. You're doing fine. If we could just go a fraction more to the left. Just a little more to the left, just a smidgen. We may just avoid killing this oncoming cyclist. <laughs> Splendid, Mrs. Davis. Yes, 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 I do think so. You've really improved over the last 17 lessons. <laughs> For this narrow lane. For this narrow lane, Mrs. Davis. The lane that we're about to have a crash in if you don't slow down. <laughs> I know there was nothing coming the other way that time, Mrs. Davis. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to shout at you like that. Yes, yes, no, yes I'm sorry. It was wrong of me to shout at you. You're going much too fast over this hump. <laughs> Your nose. No, 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 Mrs. Davis. Pure coincidence. I get these nosebleeds all the time. Oh. A cold key down your vest. <laughs> Any moment now. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, right. After him. Yes, sir. In the car, right in the car. <laughs> Mrs. Davis and, and the humpback bridge. <laughs> <laughs> that woman is amazing. I've been around that circuit with her 17 times, and every one of those 17 times she's managed to jump the humpback bridge. <laughs> Six foot in the air if we were an inch. I swear we were airborne for a good five seconds. A boing, a boing, a boing, a boing, a boing. <laughs> 17 times. Right. Who's next? Who's what? I said, who's next? Whom do I take out next? Which little person with which provisional driving licence in which grubby paw do I take out next? Oh, who's next? <laughs> that must be the longest echo on record. You want to know who's next? Oh, we've got a double echo. Your next lesson was ten minutes ago with Mr Frederick Stone. Shall I call him? Call Mr Frederick Stone. Frederick Stone, 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 Stone. Morning. Oh, it's a... Uh, Stella Crows. Pretty indestructible. Book <laughs> <laughs> him. Good. Good, Mr. Stone. Now, now, careful at this bend. There might be something coming the other way. We've never 
never seen a gorilla drive a car before. <laughs> Will you feed it on? Coconuts? <laughs> Get back. Be bold, be bold. The driver is a slob. Be bold, be bold. Sorry, Mr. Small, I, I can't help it. They're making me nervous. Oh, back it in. Let me ask the accident. Like your mother's did. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a pulling up the road, I know, the oh. Quayside Cafe. Mm -hmm. Well, stop there, have a cup of tea to calm us down, and you can throw some bread at the ducks. Sorry. I'll tell you what, um, this is uh, a good opportunity. Let's see you do a three-point turn. Do when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> behind you all clear and gently on the clutch. No, gently, not too much. No, 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 we're not trying to overtake the boat. Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> and we're pulling alongside the car over there. You're driving the car, not They're flies. I think there's a swarm of flies have drowned in. Oh, they didn't drown. They were poisoned. Oh, that's all we need. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Giddy Winkies. Oh, don't go. Fancy a chip. Sweet, but otherwise, very nice, very nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, one teaspoonful, thank you. <laughs> you haven't drunk your tea, naughty boy. <laughs> it makes me very happy to give this tea to you. calmly straining our tea, and that lot came in with their modern art display. Well, one more squeak out of any of you, and you're out. Squeak. Ouch! Ah, dry bond. Don't be bullied. Fight back. What are you, mice or men? <laughs> you haven't heard the last of this. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear the last of that. <laughs> Next time, I'll throw you out.
Right. Right. Who's going to clear this lot up, then? I'll give you one guess. That better? My pleasure. <laughs> Be a puncher. Now, or at least the fuel. Probably a little water in the carb. <laughs> Could just be a connection. connection. <laughs> oh, are you sure yeah. your battery ain't flat? What shape should it be? <laughs> Mr. Small. Mr. Small with heroes like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give ten years of my life for a Sten gun. Just <laughs> <laughs> the wind in it, take up. Mr. Stone? Yes, Mr. Small. You are going to give them a demonstration of your three-point turn. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so I am. Look at that. Tasty driver. Lovely mover. <laughs> <laughs> water in the car. Is that you, Lester, darling? No, darling. It's me, darling. Bert the milkman, darling. I think I left me milk crate in the bedroom. Oh, silly darling. I knew it wasn't Bert. We never use the bedroom. He has it in the kitchen. <laughs> What does he have on the table? His cup of tea. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, of course. Oh, me tea. Morning, Squire. Morning. <laughs> Live here, do you? Lives here, does he? Oh, it's funny we never meet at breakfast, isn't it? I said it's funny we never meet at breakfast. Only at uh, 11 30 in the morning. Every morning. Every morning, that is, that I happen to come home unexpected. It's strange, that, isn't it? A more suspicious, a more sewer-like mind might just possibly jump to the wrong conclusion. Know what I mean, Squire? Lester! Where have you come from? Me mother's gonna tell me when I'm 21. <laughs> you may not live that long. Where have you just come from? Upstairs. What was he doing upstairs? 
sad to see him grow up. <laughs> You're not my wife, are you? No, I mean, I was speaking to her and you happened to reply, so naturally I thought that you must be the, uh, you know, but you're not, are you? Good, good, I'm glad you've got that settled. Well? Look, don't go on so, Lester. Well? But I said he could use the upstairs loo. Well, what's wrong with the outside loo? Not good enough? Royalty, are we? We are not amused by the outside loos. We prefers the apples and pears to the toad and frog. <laughs> we have got a perfectly good outside loo, and it seems to be toad and frog. <laughs> toad and frog outside bog. Right. You pint-sized pasteurized street. Lester! Street <laughs> Gold top it. Gold top it? Pop it. Lester! Oh, on your float. Excuse me. I think I left me milk crate in the bedroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Lester, I just don't know how he puts up with your jokes, you know. Jokes? Oh, sorry. I mean, it's a good thing you've got such a wonderful sense of humour. I mean, one day you'll go too far with him. He's not my type. Oh, you know what I mean. I mean, he just pops in here for a cup of tea and a chat. But of course, he likes to play with the twins. They're four months old. Has he got any friends his own age? <laughs> it's just he likes kids. I mean, some men do, you know, and kids sense that sort of thing. I mean, they follow him everywhere. They'll follow anybody for free yoghurt. <laughs> Half the kids in the street are probably his anyway. What am I saying? <laughs> ah, no. You're definitely daddy's little girl, aren't you, eh? Same eyes, same nose, same chin. Same moustache. <laughs> Not too sure about you, though. <laughs> Who's that pretty chicky wicky dicky then, eh? Who's got daddy's big blue eyes? Who's got daddy's big blue eyes? Let the leader of twins alone. I've just got to sleep. Who's got mummy's big loud mouth? <laughs> mummy has. And mummy will do daddy bird big black eyes if daddy doesn't leave those little icky wicky chicks alone and go hunt worms. Sneak. <laughs> Sit. Stay. Drink tea. And then breadwinner, get out into that wicked world and earn a crust or two. Make up your mind, woman. Do you want worms or bread? <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I don't mind, really, as long as it's edible. But whatever it is, just make sure there's a little extra. Because you've now got to satisfy three more hungry bills. Electricity, telephone and gas. <laughs> They've repossessed all this furniture. <laughs> Can I have my wages before you go? <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm checking the watch by the town hall clock. Carl, oh, these windows are filthy. When were they last cleaned? How should I know? I've only been here a couple of years. Is that all? How time drags. There's been a few messages for you while you were out. Looks as if there's been a few burglaries as well. The uh, office furniture hire company says we aren't two months rental, but they're willing to bring the stuff back as soon as it's paid for. Well, let's see about that. Right, take a letter to the Set You Up Office Equipment Hire Company. Dear sir, with reference to stealing my office furniture, I... Why don't you type it? They stole the typewriter, too. <laughs> oh, never mind. Uh, it's on my way home. I'll pop in after I see my new bank manager. Right, my suit. Where, where's my interview suit? It's hanging up in the loo. It's getting all crumpled in that violin cabinet. <laughs> of course it's getting crumpled. That's why I put it there. It's supposed to be crumpled. It's taken me years to get to that degree of seediness. It's my interview suit. There's no point in seeing your new bank manager all dressed up like a Moss Ross mannequin. <laughs> You've got to look as if you need money. <laughs> How are they, by the way? Uh, who? The twins. Oh. Much the same. <laughs> <laughs> also, the garage say you can have your new shock absorbers fitted as soon as you pay for the last three six. It's the recession. <laughs> Oh, every business has its ups and downs. 
If I can absorb the shocks, why can't that be? <laughs> Mr. Small, would you mind if I said something? Something personal like. Something personal like what? Something personal like why aren't you panicking? I mean to say, here you are up to your eyeballs in bed, creditors hammering at your door, no furniture, your wife threatening to walk out on you, and all you do is stand around cracking rotten gags. I see what you mean about something personal. Well, it may interest you to know that deep down inside, I am panicking. Those rotten gags, as you call them, are merely a brave effort on my part to put a smile on in the face of adversity. It's a classical example of the Pagliacci syndrome. The what, John? Pagliacci syndrome. Pagliacci as in the opera, syndrome as in Heathrow Airport on a Saturday night. I don't get it. You would get it if you went to Heathrow Airport on a Saturday night. <laughs> See what you got to be so cheerful about. I mean, if I was in your shoes. If you were in my shoes, my little cockney sparrow, you'd fall flat on your. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> that reminds me, I must have a word with our garage to have a look at the car. I think the rear end may need just a teensy weensy bit of attention. What's that this time? Someone give the incredible Hulk a kick up the jack seat? <laughs> no, 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 not really. In fact, you might say quite the reverse. <laughs> Pardon? With a cough like that, you need a doctor. I'm a bank manager. Well, uh, actually, I've, I've come to see you in your capacity as a bank manager, uh, Mr. Um, you want a loan for an operation, is that it? To cure that cough? <laughs> no, no, it's about my overdraft. What? My overdraft. You won't get one by shouting at me. I'm not sure. <laughs> what exactly is your problem, Mr. Small? Apart, that is, from a lack of vocal control and a hacking cough. <laughs> well, I, I need some extra credit to the end of the month. It is the end of the month. <laughs> I mean, to the end of next month. <laughs> you see, I've, I've, I've got uh, uh, wages, you see, and, and there's repairs to the car again, and, and there's a petrol, of course. How much? Forty gallons. <laughs> How much money do you require? Yeah, oh, money. Uh, yeah, well, um, there's the uh, wages, you see, and the repairs to the car again, and... Uh, well, I was thinking of, uh, shall we say, 400. What? 200. <laughs> assets? Well, there's no need to be personal. Oh, assets. <laughs> uh, um... Well, there's, um, and then I've got the, um, and then there's the business, of course, which must be worth... Practically nothing. Practically nothing. <laughs> or get up to the hilt. Well, do you have any other form of security? Well, I do have a house. Good. Which is also mortgaged. <laughs> Not so good. Twice. <laughs> Where mortgages are concerned, Mr. Small, you appear to be the proud father of triplets. <laughs> Would you say, Mr. Small, that where this bank is concerned, you are a sound and solid security? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. And why wouldn't you say that, Mr. Small? Well, because I have trouble with the S's. <laughs> <laughs> the state of financial anarchy in which you managed to find yourself, could not possibly be as a result of your treatment of your customers, could it? I refer to certain allegations made against you and subsequently brought to my attention. Allegations of cruelty and bullying, of shouting at people, which would be a habit of yours. <laughs> allegations by a pupil of yours, a Mrs. Davis, that uh, you, and I quote, drove me to distraction. <laughs> now, Mrs. Davis's husband, who happens to be a very important man in this area. Uh, no, no, just, 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 just a minute. <laughs> I know nothing about complaints of the old faggot's husband. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've never met him. I mean, I don't even know what he looks like. But I'll tell you this, Mr... Uh, uh, oh, Mr. Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Wife, Mr. Small, the old faggot. 
very displeased with you. Very displeased indeed. After every driving lesson she has with you, she can talk of nothing but your rude and boorish behavior. <laughs> Do you know what I intend doing to you, Mr. Small? <laughs> no, but I can guess. <laughs> I don't think you can. I'm sending this memo to my chief cashier. Perhaps you'd care to read it. No, I'd rather not. <laughs> then I will read it to you. It states, Mr. Lester Small, account number such and such, is to be allowed maximum drawing rights and is to be given every assistance. <laughs> yes, Mr. Small, I am giving you favoured account status, but only for as long as my wife is being taught to drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite simple. For one thing, it's cheaper this way. If you don't teach her, I have to. I drive a Rover, Mr. Small. <laughs> the cost of shock absorbers on such a vehicle? <laughs> Secondly, I cannot stand my wife's driving. I'm not a young man any longer. In fact, I'm getting on in years. And I just cannot take the sheer naked terror. <laughs> you, on the other hand, are a professional. You're used to it. Let us say, I prefer to let the trained take the strain. <laughs> Very good, very good. Goodbye. Very goodbye. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Small. Sir. Happy landings. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh... Big guy, don't you? Okay, chap. Irresponsible, that is. Smashing into your car and disappearing, don't eh? You did say disappearing, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yes, without trace. <laughs> Slipped away, as you might say. <laughs> Kids, eh? Oh, young slob, you know. More money than sense. A bit wet behind the ears. <laughs> yeah, what they need nowadays is a constant reminder of the penalties of transgressive. Uh, hey, you take my son, for example. He's 18 years old and he's bone idle. Yeah, aren't they all these days? <laughs> I give him everything, you know what I mean? Good education, love, care and attention, 80 quid a week pocket money. I mentioned his own motor. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> All men are culpable. Harry Stottle. Harry? Stottle. Oh, yeah. You ever read any Harry Stottle? No, not recently, no, no. Well, you should, it's all there. Yeah. <laughs> so what does my boy do? First day out in his motor, I do I spend a long time doing that for him? First day out in his motor, he loses it. Would you believe that? <laughs> That's very careless. That's the very word I use myself, careless. He would not admit his own culpability. Give me some cotton and bull story about getting it pushed into the sea. Yeah. I've got some learned plot, huh? And he's made. It's guilty enough. Give me guilty enough. God. Do you know what I'd have done to him if I'd have got hold of him? No, no, no. I'd have wrung his bleeding neck like a bleeding chicken. <laughs> right, that's ten quid for the repairs. Yeah, repairs? Could have been. Of course, if you ain't satisfied, uh, yeah. we'll straighten it out a bit more. That's so all right. Then. That's fine. <laughs> fine. Uh, ten quid, you said. Right. Now you're in the money. Uh, you'll be sitting in your right standing account then. Yeah. <laughs> and we mustn't forget the BAT, must we? <laughs> <laughs> Lester will be back driving all to destruction next Friday at 9 o'clock.